Hey, welcome to Books and Beyond. Uh, my name is Jimmy Bennett. I'll be your host. And uh, our book, uh, Books and Beyond, is a show about uh, local authors, painters, photographers, anybody uh, who uh, has a talent that they want to share. Um, there's a lot of people out there that uh, have regular day jobs, do their thing, but they have some extraordinary talents that uh, we'd like to showcase. Um, just for an example, uh, I work at a place called Stone Ridge Retirement Community, and about three months ago they had an art show, and I was amazed at the talent of the artists, everywhere from embroidering to watercolors to painting, pottery, crafts, mm -hmm. and it was just, I was unbelievable, mm -hmm. you know, to see these people, uh, what these people do in their spare time, and that's part of what we are. Mm -hmm. um, also, I want to uh, mention, uh, I belong to an organization called CAPA, uh, which is associated with this show. It's the Connecticut Authors and Publishers Association. We have the Southeast Connecticut chapter. We meet every month on the third Monday, about 6.30 at the Groton Regency. Um, I encourage anybody, writers, poets, artists, illustrators, photographers, anybody that has anything to do with the written word or publishing a book, to come down and uh, check us out. Um, we're always looking for uh, new faces, more talent, uh, publishers, agents, anybody like that. Uh, come down, you might find something you know, that you need. Uh, we have all kinds of genre from fiction to uh, nonfiction to health to healing. Um, so it's a it's an interesting group. And uh, like I said, if you have any interest in the written word whatsoever, please come down and check us out. Um, I'm going to talk about myself for a minute. Uh, I'm an author myself. Um, I'm a professional chef by trade, but I've written two books. One, The Case of the Flying Corpse, and the other, Accounts of William Gillette, both based at uh, Gillette's Castle in East Haddam in the early 1900s, featuring William Gillette as the uh, main character. Um, I just uh, finished a third book, The Case of the Floating Corpse, and I'm kind of proud. I went and got uh, a couple of galley proofs made uh, yesterday, and I want to talk about that for a minute because people ask me what galley proofs are, and I'm not even going to act like I know what I'm talking about, but uh, a galley proof is uh, a first printed version of a book, so you can look it over, edit it, read it, check it for content, uh, see if you missed anything, whatever, um, and I encourage anybody, even if you haven't published a book, or, or but you have something written, um, I did it over at Staples in New London. Um, it wasn't that expensive. Uh, they do a nice job. They give you a spiral, double printed, both sides, uh, double space for editing, um, and a cover, you know, and it, it's reasonable price. And um, so think about that because it's, it's a whole different thing to write something on a computer screen and see it up there on a flat screen. It's a, it's a completely different thing when you hold that book in your hand and you flip through it, um, as any author will tell you, you know. Um, also, in conjunction with the news about Kappa, uh, somehow, I don't know how it happened, but uh, Rich Laporta, who was one of my first guests on the, my first show, uh, was co-chairman of Kappa, but he got an offer he just couldn't refuse, and he's moving to Orlando. So I am going to step up and take his place as co-chairman of Kappa. Um, be running the meetings and uh, working with Patty Brooks, the other co-chairman. Um, try to get things going and uh, help people along the best we can. Um, now, I have one other announcement. This is from a Kappa member named Rose Young. She will be at the R.A. Julia Bookstore in Madison on August 13th at 7 p.m. for a mystery night. And she is also participating in the Connecticut Author Trail at the Mystic No Ink Library August 15th at 6 p.m. Her book, Roses, Wine, and Murder, is a Connecticut novel rich in local history, wine pairings, and fast-paced with Coast Guard action. So um, if you'd like to go check her out, she'll be at those two places. Now I'm going to get to my guest, Richie Laterra, otherwise affectionately known as Papa Bing. Um, he is a children's author. He's written a couple of books. He has a couple more on the way and a few other talents that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so, Richie, 
Welcome to the show. Hey, glad to and be here. And please tell us about your books. All right. Well, as you mentioned, they're the Papa Bing books. Um, that's what I write under. Um, they're basically um, very young uh, children's books for, for like, they're, I guess they're called read aloud books. Um, and uh, they're about uh, a grandfather, you know, connecting with his grandson uh, by, by sharing his wisdom. Uh, some of it uh, like a folk wisdom uh, type of stuff and uh, other just, just basic uh, knowledge. And uh, they're, they're, they're educational. And uh, the kids really kind of are fascinated by them because uh, it's not stuff that you would really see or hear, you know, on the media. Uh, like I said, folk, folk wisdom uh, that has been passed on from generation to generation. Uh, in my case, my father passed this stuff on to me. Um, I illustrated the books also uh, and uh, used a lot of really rich colors. So, they, you know, kids seem to like that. Uh, I threw a, a little song in each one, uh, and as you're reading them, you sing the song, they, they really respond to songs. Uh, yep. Uh, and, and, and basically, that's it. Uh, you know, I've got these two done. Um, like you said, I had two on the way. I have two on the way, uh, but I'm kind of putting a hold on that and, until I, uh, I see how all this really moves, you know. Right. Uh, they've been pretty well received by the kids. Uh, and also by the parents and grandparents, um, you know, some of the information in them uh, has sparked questions, even from the parents. Right. You know, does that really work? You know, because, yeah. uh, you know, like the first one, the magic trick I did, uh, Pop Papa Bing's magic trick, uh, is really about the magic of nature. Um, the fishing trick is just, uh, it was just a natural, you know, follow-up to the first one. If you're going to, if you're going to get worms, which is this one about getting worms, you got to use them for something, right? So, let's go fishing. You're a, now you're a big fisherman. You love. Oh fishing, yeah, right? oh yeah. Well, when I retired in 2015, that's all I did for a while, uh, till I almost got sick of it, and I didn't want to do that. So yeah. So uh, I had these ideas to do this, and my grandson was was you know, maybe about a year old. He was about a year old, and uh, and I just loved being with him. Right. And I and I and I kept thinking I got to do something. Uh, so I, I started doing these. I just Start throwing ideas together on the computer and, you know, putting the stories down to get them out of my head and onto, onto print. <clears throat> One thing led to another. Uh, you know, and I, I, I am an illustrator also, so I started illustrating them. And, uh, and I really had actually both books almost done uh, when my, my wife mentioned something about she saw an ad for a children's book uh, educational uh, thing at Waterford High School. Uh, so I signed up. I uh, went to it. Fred Neff was the uh, the teacher. You know Fred. Yeah. Mem Fred is a yeah, member of Kappa. Member of Kappa. He uh, showed me some stuff that I did not expect. Uh, a lot about the the publishing of it and uh, and just uh, well, originally the titles were Grandpa's Magic Trick or Grandpa's Fishing Trick, and he showed me that well, you really need like a title character or a recognizable character, and. Uh, I came up with Papa Bing, kind of got a little flow to yeah, it. Yeah, it know. does. Um, uh, that that came from uh, uh, many years ago uh, up in Maine, where we go to this this great little uh, resort called uh, Bear Spring Camps in Rome, Maine. They, uh, I would fishing, a lot of fishing. Uh, we would be out there, and we were talking about fishing one day, and I was mentioning this. We, we were always looking for ways to catch fish because we really didn't know what we were doing. Uh, so we were experimenting, and uh, we were talking about fishing one day. I was talking about with my buddy Tony Batone from New Jersey. Hey, Tony, or hey, Tony, whatever the camera is. Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, and I was mentioning that when you know you see the line and your pole start to go, but a bing, you set the hook. Well, that was back in the early '80s, and I've been known as Papa Bing at Bear Spring camps ever since. <laughs> I mean, not Papa Bing, Bada Bing, Bada Bing. And that's where the Papa Bing came from. Yeah. Um, well, I think an interesting point you make, which I, I was actually kind of thinking about this a little bit, was uh, I'm not a grandfather yet. I have two sons. You know what I mean? Um, you know, kind of hoping someday, I guess. You know. More than um, likely. But, uh, you know, I was thinking that, you know, the roles of parents 
there it's a little bit more teaching discipline uh you know making guiding your child you know trying to help your child become the best person he can be but really a lot of the real life lessons i think come from your grandparents that's right yeah. when i was a kid uh some of my favorite childhood memories was my grandfather was a fisherman in a bay man and it was a different kind of fishing we didn't go out on a lake and fish for yeah. fish we pulled trap nets right. and lifted lobster pots and yeah. sorted fish and stuff like that but the work ethic the mm -hmm. you know uh little little things in life that you know just taught me the way things really are you know yeah. and how things are and stuff you know i learned a lot from him you know yeah. Yeah. um and i think that's why this kind of book kind of touches me. It's nice to see your grandfather, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, you want to pass that wisdom on, and now mm -hmm. you have something that yeah. your children will have, and their children yeah. will have, and their children will have, and, yeah. you know. That was the um, idea, yeah. Even when I wrote my books, I, I said, even if I never sold a book, if I could put one on the shelves at the family home in mm -hmm. Long Island, and, yeah. you know, future generations yeah. would see it, at least they'd be able to say, you know, I oh, was, uh, my great-great-great-uncle wrote this right. book, or, yep. you know, somebody got it. so. Uh, which is important this day. We've talked about this many times, you and me. Social media is a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. I, I think it's going to change the world. It is changing the world mm -hmm. um, as far as information and stuff. But some of it is just so fleeting. Uh, I think that sometimes, I, I hate to think that our youth is just caught up in the fact that everything they read is going to disappear with the next post. Um, and it's, you know, it's fun to see videos and watch little clips, you know, and stuff. But when it comes down to it, it's the written word, it's the book that mm -hmm. you hold in your hand and that you read, you know, again and again. I uh, I had a huge collection, but my wife, you know, finally talked me into getting rid of most of my books. Mm -hmm. I had probably a thousand, you mm -hmm. know, um, piled up. And you just can't read them all the time anyways. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it was funny. I just picked up a book not too long ago. I bought at Caldors and Groton for $6.98. Yeah. It must have been 1970. Five, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I read it the last time it fell apart. So, I threw it away, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's the longevity is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so what? Uh, so what kind of wisdom are you imparting in your books? Well, like I say in my little blurb, um, when I was growing up, uh, hanging around a small town here in Connecticut. Um, you know, a lot of the old timers, you know, we would sit around maybe at breakfast or wherever. And, and, that, and that's what they would talk about, hunting and fishing and, you know, what's, what's in season and what, what, what their bite, what the fish are biting on. And, um, you know, a lot of that stuff is, you know, I don't know if it's written down anywhere. It's just passed on, you know, from right. one generation to another and, and, and one another to another. Um, and, you know, like you said, you know, the Internet, it's all fleeting. It's, uh, you know, it's all mostly, you know, contemporary information and, uh, and social uh, information. Um, but a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, is being lost when people die. Right. You know, uh, so, you know, I, I kind of felt like, you know, especially with like the magic trick, that, that is, uh, that's really the, the, the traditional wisdom one. Um, where you're, you're getting, you know, the, the grandfather, is going to take the grandson fishing and uh, they need to get worms well you can go buy worms most places you know even in caldors i think <laughs> <laughs> but but why when you can pull them out of the ground really easily you know and that's you know the, the basis of the magic trick and he shows the kid how his grandson how to you know get the worms out of the ground how to get them to come out on their own right um and uh and, and, and then just each book has, like I said, there's a song, and then there's other stuff, you know, like, uh, you know, where milk comes from, and, you know, where, you know, you just kind of get it in the book, and it's just right. information and education um, for, the, for the children, and, and, and to, you know, to keep them interested, yep. um, and, and maybe to make them, turn them into fishermen one day, you know, right. and get out there and, yep. and enjoy nature, yep. instead of sitting in front of a screen, right. you know. Which is good. I mean, I, 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 I firmly believe that, um, you know, you're right. You could go buy fishing for dummies yeah, and, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> probably give you all the information. But it still doesn't have the same magic or the same lasting impression on you is that when somebody teaches you. Passes that uh, Passes that on to you. Takes you, you know. 
Um, it's one thing I'd love to, you know, someday I've, I always said to myself, it's, you know, a few things like that I'm going to teach my kids. Well, myself, I said I always teach my, I did teach my children to cook and I'll teach my grandson mm -hmm. how to cook. Not, I, I don't want him to be a chef by any means, but I want him to know how to cook mm -hmm. um, and feed themselves. Uh, yeah. And yeah. fishing, crabbing, uh, stuff like that is, uh, you yeah. know, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful lure. It's a, you know, even though the fishing I did with my grandfather was, you know, was commercial. That was his yeah. job, you know, he yeah. was a bay man. But yeah. uh, it was fun to do it. And he did teach us a lot about different types of fish and, you know, what was good, what was bad, and, you know, yeah. what what certain fish will go for, what certain fish won't, and, mm -hmm. you know. And it's, it's, it's uh, unbelievable, that kind of lure that's passed on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the world's changing. Um, it, it's not enough. I, I, I mean, it, it's one thing to read in a history book of how things were, but to hear it, how these people actually lived. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can talk about the Depression and, you know, yeah. this stuff, but when you talk to the people that actually lived through the Depression, they tell you how they survived and how they got through it. It's 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 an incredible thing. It's yeah. it's way more, and that is oral history should be passed down a little bit more. Yeah. And before you did a children author, what did you do? Well, I did. Uh, I was trained uh, at, at uh, Pear School of Art or Pear School. Uh, I think it's called College of Art now. Uh, back in the seventies, as a, a graphic designer with some illustration, some photography on the side, and um, so I did that for many years. But as I, when I was trained. It was old school. It was everything was done on a drawing table. Right. You know, all concepts were done in magic marker, and and then finished stuff was all done in ink. And um, and and I was doing that for for a few years, and then Macintosh computers came out. And all of a sudden, uh, anybody who could operate a computer and understood was could be a graphic designer right. because of all the programs and stuff that they had. So I became a dinosaur, <clears throat> and. Uh, I found myself out looking for work and couldn't find it in, you know, advertising graphic design anymore uh, because of that. And I had to learn the computers. Uh, so I've done a, a myriad of things over the years, uh, gra um, uh, carpentry, um, and my last job was uh, working over at the uh, Millstone Power Plant for, uh, for GE, doing, uh, running a, a water filtration system. So you can see where that went, <clears throat> and uh, when I when I left there, that's when I decided to to, to do this stuff. Um, I, I've always loved kids. I mean, right. you know, I couldn't love my two daughters, Danielle and Rachel, anymore. And then when my grandkids came along, Colin, Lincoln, uh, Joanna, and Tara, oh, I boy. didn't I didn't know I didn't think I could love them as much as my own, but yeah. Possibly even more. Yeah. So, uh, and and uh, you know, with that, you know, that's really, I, like I said, that's been my inspiration. Yeah. yeah. I I I can I can understand that. I've I've seen a. I have a few friends. You know, I'm hitting that age where their children are starting to get married and have children. Mm. You know, and uh, I've seen the changes in some of my friends it's when amazing. they have grandchildren. It's 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 amazing, but they're. There's not one of them that doesn't like it. They love it. You know what I mean? Uh, so I don't know how you can't. I don't. I don't know. So you were up in Maine, mm. and you said that you uh, posted this on uh, Papa Bing Facebook that you posted a picture of you reading to a bunch of children. Yes. Was that your grandchildren, or was it other children? Or? It was uh, my four grandchildren, uh, then a few other children that uh, decided to join in. Oh, nice. <coughs> Excuse me. And. Um, so we took some pictures of it, uh, and uh, by, like I said, I posted it, and it got quite a few hits. Um, uh, you know, it, it's uh, uh, something that we've been doing, this Bear Spring Camps, for, for many, many years. It started going when, when I was dating my wife, Margie, Marjorie, and uh, uh, the point was I was going to make was, I'm not sure. The kids are on the campfire. The kids are on, uh, and, and it's always been this amazing place for children. My kids love it and still do, and we count the days down until we go again. Um, it's, it's a wonderful setting of a bunch of these very rustic cabins right on a lake, this big, huge, beautiful main lake, um, where everybody gets to know each other because you, 
you know, you basically go the same time every year. Right. So that's how I got to know people from New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland. Um, and it, family oriented, um, absolutely wonderful uh, people that run the place. Um, they feed you, they clean your cabin for you, they make sure you have plenty of wood and whatnot for, for fires. And nice. It's just, it's just very. That's a, that is, that's. It's a vacation. That's very old school. I mean, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, it is. You don't see that as much anymore. Um, I know that there is a big subculture of camping mm -hmm. in, uh, in the world. A lot of people, and a lot of people with their RVs go to the same places every year, same time. All right. And they meet up with the same people, yeah. which is nice. It's a nice continuity, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know if uh, I don't know what happened to that or why. I don't know if it was just expense or the fast pace of the world or the family dynamics have changed or you know whatever. But uh, but those are the things that do keep your families together and oh. keep everybody. You know, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of people uh, they they like to go someplace different all the time, and you know I get that. You see the world, you know, um, but this is uh, like a mainstay. This is like a. Um, you know, a place where uh, it, it's part of life. It's, right. it's, it's literally a part of your 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 everything. Yeah, so it's in your blood. What do you guys fish for up there? Bass, um, pike. Accidentally, uh, they're really aggressive fish, and they right. uh, you know they they hit on everything. But bass mostly. Um, and every once in a while, we'll we'll keep one if it's big enough and. Uh, the dining room will will prepare it for you, yeah. you know, and they'll have it and they'll serve it along with whatever for your supper. Uh, it's, it's just it's just a great time. Nice, yeah, very nice. nice. All right, very back nice. to the books now. You, <laughs> um, <clears throat> how's the marketing going? Hmm, that's tough, and I don't spend enough time on it. Um, I I really could do more, but it's really not my thing. Um, uh, it's uh. It's a lot of uh, kind of hunt and peck, you know, f trying to figure it all out. And and I gotta say, Kappa, you know, <laughs> has been you know a big part of uh, of helping me do that. Uh, you know, when I like I said, I went, I took that course with Fred Neff, and he introduced me to Kappa. Uh, so I immediately became a member. I I think that was that would be November of 2015. So it was right after I think you started. Right. And. Uh, uh, the uh, the people and and you know the information sharing that we that we do there is has really been huge right and um yeah sales sales could be better they they're good um i'm pleased with it and uh uh like i said i i, I could do more with it um but uh it does take a lot of time it takes a it, lot it, of effort it does and i have to say i think that was the one thing <clears throat> um and I really I thank Kappa for this because Rich Laporta uh, displayed right. me these notions in my first meeting. Yeah. Um, you know, you always dream about writing a book, and you know, and you know the time and the effort it takes to do it. And yeah, not so much with the chi children's well, book it's, as it would not. Well, so you got to do your illustrations, and match yeah, the, the illustration to to the verse. That's a that's a quite a talent. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I think you could argue both back and forth. You know. Uh, you know, sometimes writing a book is just, you know, you sit there and just type away, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, so, um, but marketing, uh, publishing, it's, it's tough to get it out there uh, and stuff. But we encourage, you know, and this is one thing I do encourage everybody is I always say this, you know, when you go to a local bookstore or you're looking for books or children's books, look for your local authors, um, number one might be something that's dear to your heart that's nearby and also uh it's the same thing you know having a signed book by the author to give to your grandchild is something they can hold on to you know forever and it's a personal beautiful gift and you know i uh that, i do that's encourage a good, that you that's know? a good point local authors um just because they're not well known doesn't mean no. that they don't write really no. well. We have no. some amazing authors. We uh, we, in, we in really do. Um, and you know, you, you get people that like read your book and go, "Wow, I, I can't even believe it." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Well, you know, uh, mm -hmm. 
you know, like we said, we all we all hope you know that uh, Bantam is going to call you up the next day and yeah. you know and send you that big royalty <laughs> check and then yeah. off to Hollywood and uh, <laughs> I'll never work again. But uh, but we don't do it for that so much as we do just do it for the love of doing it and yep, uh, to labor of love. Like you said, for your for your grandchildren, you know, or for my friends and family, I just want something left that they can. You yep, know, this think. is my legacy. So, absolutely. Um, I also want to mention that Rich Richie is a fantastic graphic designer. He is helping me uh, with doing the cover for my next book, um, Case of the Floating Corpse, which I hope to have out by the end of the summer, uh, hopefully. Um, so uh, we'll be hard at work on that, and uh, you'll be able to see his work then. Um, I also say, uh, where are your books available? Well, uh, not too many places. I have the website, uh, papabing.com. Uh, where you can get them, they're uh, they're twelve ninety nine. They're eight and a half by eleven hardcover, really well printed. Uh, Rich Laporta, uh, we we found a great printer, uh, and, and the colors are absolutely vivid and rich. And uh, um, uh, what was I saying about where to get them? Yeah. Oh, um, folks, they're twelve ninety nine. Uh, but if you buy both books, you know one of each, you can get them for twenty dollars. Uh, yep. So it's almost six dollars savings. Uh, on the website, papabing.com. You got any upcoming events? Um, the the only one that we're that I'm talking about right now is the Garlic Festival. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about that with uh, Jim. Yep. And but no, I don't really have anything uh, planned yet. Uh, this was my upcoming event, being on yep. your show. <laughs> um, so, uh, but but again, uh, with Kappa's help, uh, and you know, and, and the list of events that we're going to try to get involved in. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do more. All know. right, good. All right. Well, I want to thank you, Richie, for coming on the show. Um, Thanks for having me. Next uh, next show uh, on the fifth of August. My guest will be Elizabeth Sade, author of Lobster Summer, and the content coordinator of the Groton Mystic Neighbors magazine. Um, so please join us. And in the meantime, please support your local authors and artisans mm. and. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you.